What are you doing here? Oh, hi there! Today we are baking lights in Unreal. So, first thing first, we are going to make a scene inside 3ds Max and after that import everything in Unreal and make the lights. At this point I decided that it's not enough to have just floor and couple of walls, so I started adding some details like pipes and ventilation. Now that we created some boxes, it's time to fab a couple of textures because, as my father was saying, what is a box without a texture? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. A box.
So now that we established the base for the scene, I'm going to just throw a couple of lights there and doing so I'm going to quickly run you over what type of lights there are inside Unreal 4. We have first our directional light, which is generally used for a sun. Then we have point light and spotlights. Those two are pretty much self-explanatory, but the thing that I want to tell you and what is the biggest difference, especially when you're doing game projects, point lights are a lot more expensive from spotlights because point lights are essentially just six spotlights which are pointing different direction and overlapping. So having this in, in mind, especially when you're having like movable or stationary lights, it will be a lot more costly in your scene in terms of resources. I'm going to use spotlights, so I'm just going to quickly drag and drop one light in the scene and we are going to go over what kind of settings and properties we have. The first thing that we need to set for our lights is the mobility. Mobility is essentially what kind of a light is this. We have static, stationary and movable. Static is something which is going to be completely baked. We are not going to have any dynamic shadows or any dynamic light calculations. Stationary is going to be baked light, but also we are going to have some dynamic shadows for animated actors. And the last one is movable, which is going to be fully dynamic. Going down into the lights tab, we have intensity, which is pretty much how bright is our light. Then we have color, attenuation radius, which means how far our lights are affecting the scene. Then since we are having a spotlight, we have our inner cone and outer cone. So this way we can make, I'll just put a lid and move it a little bit high up. So you can see that there is this gradient, which is the brightest spot of our light is over here, and then it slowly fades. So if we play with the inner and outer cone, you can see that we can make this gradient bigger or smaller. Now that we went quickly through the properties, what we have for our spotlights, I'm going to speed up the video, but before doing this, I'm just going to quickly change the color because I want the ones on the bottom to be some warm color and the ones on the top are going to be cold. Now that I've placed the lights, I'm going to quickly give it a build and see what exactly is the result. You can see that generally overall not much change, except that we can see that the resolution of the lights is a little bit lower on some of the objects. I'm going to place the lights which are on the top and they are going to be rectangular ones and I'm going to use cold color as I told you earlier. This will be perfect for our lights on the top. Just have in mind that rectangular lights are as well something which is more heavy in terms of performance, especially if it goes into a stationary. Here for the first one, you can see that I placed more of the warm lights, so I'm going to leave it like this but I'm going to place more of the cold lights over here and here so that it brings more depth into our scene and more contrast. This part here, I'm going to leave it a little bit more dark so that we have the difference between more bright and more dark. It's time for us to start playing a little bit more with the GI settings, add an environment fog and as well add a reflection sphere so that we start getting the reflections from our materials. Before starting to tweak a little bit the scene so that it has better contrast and also tweak the colors, I want to tell you what exactly the skylight does. The skylight basically captures distance parts of your level and applies those to the scene as a light. For skylight also it's a good idea to use a cube map. Sometimes when I'm working on a scene and I really want to add some extra details, either for reflection or for skylights, I'm creating a 360 images and after that you can apply those as an HDRI or you can take ready HDRIs and apply them here so that you get more details into your lights and as well more details into your reflections if you do this on your reflection spheres. 
The second thing that I wanted to talk is about the light map coordinates. You can see that some of the objects that I have at the moment are completely black. This is, I either have an overlapping light maps or there is something wrong with the settings. So I'm just going to quickly run over all the objects and see what exactly is happening for all the light maps. And first thing, I'm going to check how exactly the UVs are laid down for the our light map. This can be done if you click here on top UV. Channel 0 is usually the channel where you have your UVs for your textures and then on the other channels are the ones that are going to be used for baking the lights. And you can see that it's very basic thing. It's something that was automatically generated from Unreal. Now that we saw where to find how exactly our UVs look like, I'm just going to show you where to find the settings of what resolution the light maps are going to be and also which channel it's going to be using. Here on the side we have build settings and then we have minimum light map resolution which by default is on 64 but we can always change it. Have in mind that higher resolution means that it will be slower to build. Also it will be a little bit more heavy and as well especially if you're working on mobile projects it will take more it will take more space as the textures that are being created are with higher resolution. Then we have the source light map which at the moment you can see that it's on 0 and I'm going to change it to 1 because one we can see that it's the one that's corrected. I'm going to quickly go and check all the other elements. Now I'm leaving you the rest of the video to enjoy the adjustments and finalizing the scenes. I'm gonna be changing the settings for the lights in terms of intensity and color and as well I'm going to play a little bit with the materials and adjusting the roughness and also adding a few decals and some other elements just to add a little bit more details.